prevention and uh, treatment of diabetic kidney disease. So, how should be our approach? The approach should be to optimize glucose control and keep the target HbA1c less than 7. Now, the um, HbA1c cannot be used universally in all CKD patients because it becomes elevated in CKD. I will come to it later. But uh, in patients whom we are suspecting diabetic kidney disease, we should achieve optimal glucose control. Uh, for, then we have to screen and measure the urinary albumin excretion. So, it can be less than 30, it can be 30 to 300, it can be more than 300. If it is normal albuminuria that is less than 30, see if hypertension is present. If hypertension is not present, aspirin, statin, cessation of smoking, weight reduction and nutritional counseling. So, these are the general things that is done for any diabetic patient is continued. Okay. Now, the target is going to be to keep stable GFR and to keep the patient with stable microalbuminuria or normal albuminuria and blood pressure to keep it at less than 140-90, HbA1c to keep it less than 7 and to achieve weight loss so that BMI becomes less than 25. So, these are the uh, targets to be achieved in a patient who is a diabetic but ha has no proteinuria and no hypertension. If the patient has hypertension, that is normal albuminuria with hypertension or microalbuminuria or macroalbuminuria, then a, a AC inhibitor or RAS blockade should be given. Okay. Once an AC inhibitor is given, then serum creatinine and potassium should be checked after 2 weeks. Normally, around 30% increase in serum creatinine can be expected after giving AC inhibitor or ARB. But if this is more than 30%, then we should suspect AC inhibitor induced AK. And this is also applicable to uh, renal vascular hypertension. If there is bilateral atherosclerotic uh, renal artery stenosis uh, coexistent with diabetes, which is very much possible, then in that situation, the creatinine can increase very, very high because the defense mechanism to maintain the renal perfusion is uh, presence of renin angiotensin aldosterone and that is lost in this condition okay by giving ACRB. Now BP goal is achieved uh, then we continue with the same thing and we titrate the AC inhibitor and um, ARB and uh, we keep the uh, BP under control and also albuminuria under control okay. Now what are the what is the significance of RAS blockade in patients with diabetes? It has renal protection that is independent of the antihypertensive effect that is very important whether the antihypertensive effect is there or not in a patient with microalbuminuria even with normal blood pressure even with normal blood pressure AC inhibitor or ARB has to be initiated okay. How does it act? What happens normally? This is the afferent arteriole, capillaries, efferent arteriole, right? Here in the distal tubule is the RAS system, right? This is normal. Uh, RAS system in the sense macular densa, macular densa will go act in the afferent arteriole and release renin when required. Now, what happens in diabetes? In diabetes, there is afferent arteriolar vasodilatation, right? Efferent arteriole does not dilate. So, what is going to happen? Loss, lot of blood is going to come into the body and lead to hyperfiltration or intraglomerular hypertension. Now, what happens by giving AC inhibitor? This, this effect is mediated by angiotensin also which causes afferent arteriolar dilatation and efferent arteriolar vasoconstriction. So, by giving AC inhibitor what is happening is this effect is re reversed that is uh, I hope this is clear how it causes glomerular hyperfiltration think two pipes like this in between there is a tank in or series of pipes in which this blood is moving. Now, this pipe has become bigger and this pipe is still smaller. So, what is going to happen the pressure here? It is going to increase right this is caused by angiotensin. 
Now once the AC inhibitor is given, what it is going to do is, it is going to dilate the efferent arteriole as much as the afferent arteriole, arteriole is dilated. So the pressure in between uh, falls down and there is going to be reduced intraglomerular hypertension. So this is the mechanism by which it acts uh, for RAS blockade. Okay? And it acts on the non-hemodynamic effect of the angiotensin 2 also. Angiotensin 2 has both hemodynamic and non-hemodynamic effect. The non-hemodynamic effect will be uh, to worsen inflammation in the kidney. So that is also prevented. In type 1 diabetes, there is reduction of risk to progression to overt nephropathy and data is insufficient to uh, demonstrate the action of ARB. Like all the trials which were, were done in type 1 diabetes was done with AC inhibitor captopril. So uh, the data for ARB is not much. In type 2 diabetes also, it is going to reduce the risk to progression to overt nephropathy by 70%. That is very, very significant uh, number okay and here uh, in the trials that is done in um, type 2 diabetes like irma 2 trial or marvel trial all this was done on arb so the data of ac inhibitor is lacking but theoretically there should not be any difference between the action of ac inhibitor or arb in patients with uh, diabetes and kidney disease okay so any of these can be uh, given this is how uh, it acts the mechanism of action